All right, hi everyone. Uh, today we're gonna be speaking about a project that we created to enable notifications features for the Argo project. All right, uh, so my name is Remington Breeze uh, and I'm one of the maintainers of the Argo project along with Alex here. Um, and I'm also a software engineer at a company called Acuity, uh, which we launched this week. Uh, and Acuity provides vendor supported distribution of Argo uh, in addition to support and services that are around the Argo project. All right, Alex. Hi everyone, uh, so uh, my name is Alexander Matyushensev. Don't try to pronounce my last name. I'm, I'm a principal software engineer at a company called Intuit, and I'm also a long time maintainer of Argo. I've been with Argo for like maybe five, six years already. Worked on uh, Argo workflows, rollouts, and currently my focus is Argo CD. All right, and a few words about a uh, company I work for. So uh, Intuit is a US-based fintech company. And <clears throat> Intuit is a product maker of financial products such as TurboTax, uh, Mint, and uh, QuickBooks. So, and we serve 10 million customers in all segments. And I'm happy to say that Intuit is a gold member of CNCF. All right, enough introductions. Now we can get to a topic. So as Remington mentioned, we want to speak about <coughs> notifications and Kubernetes and Argo. I want to start with Argo. And you might know already that Argo is not a single product. It's a family of products, projects. And so uh, we have four currently, and it's really important for us that every project is focused on a single use case. So for example, Argo CD deliver GitOps function as a, as a service, and uh, uh, Argo rollouts complements kind of Argo CD in, and allows you to get so-called progressive delivery, which includes uh, blue green deployment, canary deployment, and way more other features. So Argo workflows and events together focused on batch processing use cases and help people with uh, data processing, machine learning use cases, and so on. And so uh, we're really trying to keep this principle to, to, to stay focused on a single use case because, because that's what helps us to stay light, stay, keep project lightweight and keep the high quality bar. Uh, at the same time, it's hard to argue that uh, notifications is a very important feature for the good end user experience. And as you might notice, a notification was not mentioned in, as a focus uh, when I described any of these projects. And so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of, it's a problem. And uh, we've heard a lot from our end users that notifications feature is needed. And the next slide is to kind of, just to prove that it's not just our imagination. Uh, we've got a bug report, a feature request, about notifications pretty much in each and every project uh, of Argo organization, uh, GitHub organization. And so uh, it was just clear that it's no longer okay to just keep ignoring them and we had to do something. And so we did, we decided to uh, uh, try to investigate and see what is it we can do so we can deliver a great user experience, enable notifications, but do not sacrifice the uh, quality and keep projects light uh, as, as they currently are. All right, so, and in this talk, I will walk you through our journey that we uh, did like last year. Uh, I will explain to you which options we tried, which worked, which didn't work, and you will see in action the solution that we are pretty happy about. All right, so I'm going to start from step number one. So before we even consider building anything, we just decided to see if there is anything in the Kubernetes ecosystem that already works and probably can be used by Argo users. And we, can see, we checked a lot of projects. I just highlighted three of them here. Uh, the first one you probably already know and probably using. It's a KubeWatch project by Bitnami Labs. And we really enjoyed when we tried this project for the first time. It was extremely easy to, to get started and get notifications for uh, built-in Kubernetes resources. However, we ran into a couple <coughs> gaps, and one was that, uh, unfortunately, KubeWatch do not support custom Kubernetes resources. At least it didn't support it at the time when we checked it. And so I think that was a blocker enough for us because Argo uh, is a set of Kubernetes, custom Kubernetes resources. Next, uh, the simplicity is great, but we had we heard a lot from our users that customization is also very important and we could not find it in KubeWatch. So we decided to check another one. <clears throat> and the next project was uh, Prometheus and Alert Manager. And it, it felt like a good solution probably. 
at least you cannot complain about <coughs> lack of customization. It's possible to configure a lot using Prometheus and Alert Manager. Uh, but we got some pushback from end users when we mentioned this option. One was uh, apparently not every Argo user uses Prometheus, even though I think it's the most uh, popular tool in the area uh, of you know, monitoring. And so it just felt wrong to ask a person to install, run, and maintain Prometheus just to get notifications for Argo CD. And the second problem was that uh, you cannot kind of provide all the information you need to construct a notification message in form of Prometheus metrics. So it was, again, kind of uh, not a good fit for us. And so um, the last project that I want to describe, uh, it's something that we built in the past. And we just kind of forget about it. And then uh, so the project I'm referring to is uh, Argo Cube Notifier. It was a hackathon project that uh, was created by one of Argo, uh, pro uh, Argo team members. And it was there for a while. And so what we did, we tried to analyze user feedback and understand what was wrong. Like, why didn't it work? And why didn't we just use this project? And so as opposed to KubeWatch, uh, uh, Argo Cube Notifier is extremely flexible. But <laughs> according to feedback from users, uh, flexibility doesn't mean uh, you know, ease of use. And so it was just too difficult to use it. Each and every user was supposed to come up with you know, thousands of YAMLs of configuration. And so we decided to maybe, you know, take it into account and uh, make sure it won't be repeated in, in the final solution. And so, yeah, it was kind of clear. We'll have to build something. And one more step back, and we decided to do a deep dive and you know, speak with our user, analyze all the bugs that were filed in GitHub repo. And this is how we felt you know, like after a day or two of, of this exercise. Um, there are a lot of things we learned. One of them was um, apparently notifications are not just Slack and email. Uh, a lot of people apparently don't use Slack. A lot use uh, MS Teams. Some, some use uh, Telegram. Google chat, Rocket chat, and actually I can continue a lot, and it would be just the first type of notification uh, providers, text-based. But for some people, notification means Jira issue, pager duty, maybe it's a comment and pull request. And some users said, we just want to call an API server when, uh, with, and custom, uh, do a custom REST API call. So as you can imagine, it, it's, like, it's tough to support all of this especially if you want to support it in four projects. So it's a lot of coding work and a lot of dependencies that you have to introduce. Uh, it was just the beginning. The next set of challenges, not problems, was that every user has opinion about when the notification should be sent. Some wants to get notified about everything. Some only wants to know about important events. Important means like different for, for everyone. And absolutely everyone wants to be able to customize the notification text. So that was another kind of challenge we had to take into account because at best we probably can go through most common use cases, but it would take us like forever to iterate and codify all of them. But it was not, it was not a waste of time. We kind of we analyzed all of that and we noticed that we have different set of repeated requirements from two personas uh, of user who, users who use Argo. So we have platform operators and application developers. And from every platform operator, we heard set of requirements that indicated that operators are very opinionated and value flexibility. And you can understand that it's a drop of a platform operator to implement use cases that are important for, for the organization. And they value flexibility, which means they're willing to configure, spend a lot of time configuring what the, the, the use cases, uh, the functionality to implement use cases they want to uh, implement. And uh, they are fine to write YAML, but not Golang code. And it's understandable. And so as opposed to operators, we have application developers who value simplicity a lot 
and they are less opinionated, which means they do not want to invest a lot of time because they're writing, uh, you know, end user applications. Plus, they are usually fine with what uh, platform operators uh, want them to use, and it feels like a very good fit. And the only additional requirement from uh, application developers was that uh, they do not want to file a jury ticket. This is just not okay. They want some simple way to, you know, enable the notification feature for themselves, and they don't mind to write a little bit of YAML as well. And that really helped us, and eventually, after some brainstorming, we come up with a set of more or less clear requirements. We understood what is it we want, and on a high level, like, we basically, we realized that we want flexible solution, which means it's driven by configuration. And we expected platform operators to spend some time writing the configuration. The project maintainers can help uh, operators as much as possible and deliver a good st getting started set of configurations. Uh, of course, we wanted to support a lot of notification services, and we just, which is very important, we knew we are going to add more and more and more, and we wanted to kind of introduce some interface that encapsulates complexity of notifi different notification providers. And second set of requirements related to end users, we really wanted them to you know, consume it as, as, as easy as possible. And so the requirements are a great way to, to start developing, which we did during last year. And uh, I'm happy to say that we have something real to show you today. And so I'm happy to talk about the project that which we call uh, Argo Notification Engine. So Notification Engine is a Golang-based uh, library, uh, which is already used by Argo Workflows, Argo CD, and work, uh, sorry, Argo CD and Argo Rollouts. Workflow support is coming hopefully soon. And so uh, Notification Engine already supports uh, all these uh, notification services uh, which you see on the screen, and this is not the full list. Uh, there is a new uh, release coming soon, and the final version of current version of notification engine supports more than a dozen of such services. And what is also very important, uh, notification engine comes with an opinionated user experience, which means uh, any user who configure Argo CD notifications no longer need to learn a new set of, uh, you know, configuration parameters to configure it in Argo rollouts. It would feel exactly the same, and basically, we don't expect that any additional education would be needed to consume Argo rollout notifications. And here is the repo. So if you're interested in learning about the engine, feel free to open this URL. Uh, don't hesitate to give it a star. It needs stars. And... Uh, I guess that's it. Now I can go a little bit deep into and explain how it works before we start uh, the real demo. Okay, so here you are seeing a high-level diagram that demonstrates components of a uh, notification engine. Uh, con notification controller is a central par part of it. Uh, what it does, it, it consumes the configuration uh, provided by the operator and stored in a config map uh, and some authentication uh, information stored in secret. And it continuously watches uh, custom resources. And what it does, it basically, um, as soon as it uh, realized that according to configuration, an important event happened, it would send a notification and the information about uh, who is interested in the notification is stored in a un uh, Kubernetes annotation, which is managed by application developer. And as I mentioned, Engine supports a, a bunch of uh, notification providers out of the box. I realize it's maybe not so easy to understand, so I have a few YAML snippets for you, which hopefully will make it more clear. So what you are seeing now is a real-life example of a configuration for Argo CD application notifications, Argo CD notifications. So the operator supposed to pretty much configure the following to enable notifications. So first of all, 
engine needs to know when to send the notification. And we in introduced something we call a notification trigger. And so notification trigger is just a function that has a name and this expression that returns, that consume custom uh, Kubernetes resource and returns true or false. As soon as function res uh, uh, result value changes from false to true, this is when a notification engine sends a message. And it needs to, so the next step is, it needs to somehow produce the content for that notification. And to do so, it uses another configurable part, which we call notification template. And name is self-explanatory, basically. It's another function that consume a Kubernetes resource and produce a message. And example here is pretty simple. Uh, it just produces a string that has some information about application, including name, including status. Um, yeah, so nothing complex here so far. And uh, the final step is to simply provide uh, credentials that are required to talk to the notification provider. In this particular case, we are configuring Slack and uh, the real token is stored in a secret that can be referenced in a config map. And so I promised some uh, encapsulation, so here it is. Uh, the notification template not necessarily defines just a boring text. It can be something specific to the notification service. So in this case, it's a Slack attachment. Sorry, there is a lot of YAML, but this is what it takes to generate an attachment. Uh, and on the right side, you can see a really you know, a beautiful Slack message. And we support, we have something for almost each and every uh, notification service. So hopefully it makes more clear what operator has to do to configure the notifications. So the next step is uh, what does end user, application developer has to do to start using it. And this is not much. Basically, uh, the end user just have to apply an annotation. And in that annotation, user have to specify the trigger name that knows about when notification should be sent and uh, explain where we want to get notification to be delivered. So in this case, uh, user wants to be notified about successful application things, which is the trigger part. Next, it wants user wants to get notifications in Slack and the destination within Slack, Slack are two, two channels. Uh, yeah, and I think we, we really read it just to see it live. Um, Remington. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. All right. Uh, so before I get into the demo, um, I'll go over at a high level what we're going to be doing. Uh, so first, uh, what we're going to be configuring is a notification for an Argo rollouts. Um, so there are three things that we need to configure notifications for rollouts. So uh, the first is the latest version of Argo rollouts. Uh, version 1.1 includes support for Argo notifications through the notifications engine. Uh, so to install that, uh, it's, a, it's pretty simple. You go to our GitHub, download the installation manifest, and it's a simple kubectl apply. Uh, the second thing that we need is, uh, as Alex mentioned, there are two personas. And the first is from an operator perspective. Uh, so what you need to do as an operator is configure uh, Argo rollouts notifications config map. Um, and then the third thing that we need to do uh, is configure, uh, as a developer, we need to configure our rollout with an annotation that Alex demonstrated um, to set up notifications for that specific rollout. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay. Uh, let me just stop mirroring. Okay. Great. Let's go. All right, so the first thing. Um, you can see here I have a uh, Argo Rollouts dashboard running locally on my machine. Uh, and up here in the right, upper right-hand corner, you can see that I'm running version 1.1. Uh, so we have what we need there. Uh, next, uh, let's take a look at the config map that we have to set up. Uh, so like I said, you have to name it Argo Rollouts Notification Config Map um, for it to be detected by the Rollouts controller. Um, so let's start from the bottom. So we have this uh, service.email. So uh, that's what we're going to be setting up today, uh, an email notification. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. So we have a username, password, et cetera. Uh, the variables prefixed with a dollar sign are being injected from a secret that I set up previously. I'm not going to go over the secret right now, uh, but it's pretty straightforward to set up. 
Uh, and then we have some straightforward uh, SMTP configuration. Uh, and this allows the rollout to be sending emails on behalf of my personal email account. Um, so that's all, we, all there is to it there. Um, OK, so let's move on to the template. So uh, you can see uh, here we have an email stanza. And this contains email-specific notification configuration. So in this case, it's a subject. Um, and we also have the message stanza. And this is going to be shared across many different notification services. So um, this allows you to basically add, say, a, a Slack stanza here or a Telegram stanza that has Slack or Telegram uh, specific configuration, but you have a common message that's shared amongst them. And another interesting thing to note here is uh, this piece between the curly braces, which is injecting information from our rollout spec, or our rollout metadata, excuse me. Um, and it's just going to inject the name of the rollout. Uh, you can get a little fancier with this, but we'll keep it simple for this demo. Uh, and then finally, we have the trigger. Um, so this is a trigger called on purple. Uh, and it's going to be sending this on purple, or my, the my purple template that we just configured, uh, and that is under the send field. Uh, and that's going to be sent when the first container in the rollout spec template is uh, set to a rollout demo purple image. Uh, so like Alex said, as soon as that statement is set to true, that's when that notification is going to be sent. Uh, so yeah, that's all there is to it there. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, rollout configuration. So the only thing that we really care about here in this rollout is this annotation, which is very similar to the one that Alex showed you for uh, an Argo CD application. And uh, there are three important parts here, uh, or rather four. So there's this subscribe bit, which basically says that uh, we're going to be subscribing to notifications for this rollout. Uh, and then there's the on purple, which is the trigger that we set up uh, in that config map that I just showed you. And then finally, the email service that we also set up in that config map. Um, you can set up. Again, other services like Slack or Telegram or, or what have you. Um, and then finally, the last por uh, portion that's important is this email, which is going to be the recipient of the notification. Um, all right, so that's all we have to do to configure notifications for a rollout. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. You would just uh, QTT apply those resources or however else you apply manifest to your cluster, and uh, you're good to go. So let's see that working. Um, all right, so I have the rollout dashboard back here. And you can see that my rollout is running a rollout demo blue image. Uh, so I'm going to change it to a purple image. OK. So now the rollout, uh, the canary replica set is running the purple image. Uh, so let's see if we got a not notification for it. So let me refresh my inbox. And you can see that we have a notification. Um, like I said, this is sent from my personal account to a demo account, and uh, our rollout rollout demo has a purple image. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to it for email notifications for Argo rollouts. Awesome. Thanks, Be before we wrap up the demo and move into questions, I did want to share with you <clears throat> some additional information. And I will use slides to do so. All right, you can see my screen. So awesome. Basically, one important uh, thing about Argo notification engine I already mentioned it before, but uh, I will repeat it again. So the engine is not just for Argo. We build it for us, for ourselves, and we consume it. But it has pretty much nothing Argo CD or Argo rollout specific or workflows. And so it's perfectly uh, fine to use it to uh, enable notification and get the integration with a bunch of services out of the box for any other custom resource. And here are a few links that you can use to, to try it. So of course, you would need uh, it, it will be useful to navigate to our notification engine repository and read the documentation. And as soon as maybe you're interested to build something, you can check this example that supports notifications for a certificate CRD of a cert manager. And it basically, there is one Golang file uh, that has pretty much everything you need to, to get it working. And so if you want to do one step further, then just go get GitHub Argo Project Notification Engine and work on your project. And this is it. Thanks for listening, and please ask questions. Yeah.